Hi everyone, it is Handan Ege here. Uh, I am uh, in, a, in Michigan. I am a member of Turkish American Cultural Association in Michigan. Uh, we are trying to uh, involve uh, uh, people uh, some activities during these hard times because we can't do any other uh, event. And we are trying to educate people in our past, in our other events in the country, in the world by Zoom meeting. We have a member of our community, Sibel Özer. Uh, she is a psychotherapist and art therapist. And she kindly accepted our invitation to make a series about Turkish women in our community. Uh, she will make some interviews and uh, let us know other people in our community more. And I want to introduce you Sibel Özer and she will explain more about her project, what, will she, what she will do. But first of all, I want to know her a little bit more. I want you to know her a little bit more. Hi, Sibel, how are you? Hi, good. So, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you for accepting our offer and then doing this. And uh, first, I want to start uh, with you. Who are you? Uh, you are. You came from Turkey. You were born in Turkey. Let us know a little bit your childhood, your education, your background, how you came here to the U.S. Uh, and we will go. On. Like all the other women, uh, we are featuring in our uh, mini series. I'm also a Turkish immigrant. Uh, so I was born and raised in Turkey, pretty much completed my education there and then ended up moving here, mostly due to my husband's profession. So uh, like many others, I was, a, uh, I was a woman who ended up here because of her heart connections rather than <laughs> professional choices and then had to adapt my professional existence. Uh, he's also a medical professional, right? Yes, he's a medical doctor. Uh, I used to be a clinical psychologist back home and we first came to Cleveland and you might be familiar that different states have different uh, requirements for uh, licensing and so I had to make adjustments as my husband was uh, doing his fellowship and then got different positions and we moved from Ohio to Kentucky, uh, Louisville, and then to Denver, Colorado, before we ended up in Michigan. What a journey. <laughs> you yeah. already seen how many states. <laughs> We've had quite a gypsy life. Yeah. Uh, and so we, I had to repeat quite a few steps. It took me about nine years in total, which when I say it out loud, science sounds so awfully long, but in the experience of it, it really wasn't that much. We were, you know, going from one day to day uh, to the next, doing uh, the next step that was necessary towards the goal, which was ultimately to be able to work once again as a psychotherapist. So okay, I, did. I want to get in. You didn't tell anything about your Turkey background. Um, yeah. Were you born in Istanbul or city where, where are you from? I was actually born in Ankara, but my family moved to Istanbul um, just before I started elementary school. So I always consider myself um, as from Istanbul, which is okay. where most of my uh, important uh, years were spent. So junior high, high school, all the way to university. I was in Istanbul and it's one of my big loves, that city. <laughs> And so, here, but actually, it is a San Francisco Bridge, <laughs> you know? but it reminds me of Bosworth. <laughs> yes, yeah. 
Okay. I haven't been. Do you have siblings or family in Turkey right now? Uh, right now, I just have a brother who's there. We moved my mom to Germany to stay with my sister. We have a rather international family. Uh, it's always been like that. Uh, my father is, uh, he has one other brother. So there are two brothers. One of them married a German woman, my mom. One of them married a French woman. My father did end up coming back to Turkey and my uncle ended up um, settling in France. So when it was our turn, uh, turn as children, uh, we ended up scattering in three continents as well and ended yeah. up moving to America with my husband. My sister resides in Germany with my German brother-in-law uh, and my brother is the only one left behind. But all of us grew up in uh, Istanbul and uh, all of us actually went to college in America. Oh. And then all of us initially returned back home and then life made us you know, scattered you. around once again. Okay. You got the college degree in the U.S. I did. And okay. actually, it might be worth mentioning, uh, this is something I think Americans can be proud of. Um, I went to a, a, an American uh, high school. It was called American Academy for Girls. And we have a couple of these schools. Robert College is another, uh, the most famous one that were built in Istanbul. Um, I'm not exactly sure the initial, but I think it might have been missionaries, but it was built with the goal of educating, giving us a, a better education in Turkey to my generation and, you know, the ones before and after, of course. Um, and so I started learning uh, English when I was in junior high. Mm -hmm. Of course, it ended up improving much over the years, yeah. but uh, it made it quite a bit easier when I came here. I already had quite a background, both from having studied it in junior high and high school, and then having gone to college here before, it made my transition here much smoother. And English language is important because of your job. You are yeah. talking to people constantly for your uh, treatment therapy sessions, right? Absolutely. In fact, nowadays, uh, since most of my professional life has been spent here in America, we're here 20 years now, uh, I struggle uh, talking uh, very fluently in Turkish when it comes to professional <laughs> no. I, I know you are first, I can still, you know, talk to people. That's not a problem. But when it comes to uh, when you need more professional language and vocabulary, mine is really mostly in, in English. And you have two boys, I guess, and then they were born here, right? Well, uh, my older one, Aksa, was born in Istanbul. And oh. then we had, um, this is a good story to share. We had a major earthquake, the Adapazura earthquake mm. in 99 which had a big influence in our lives. Um, I had just graduated from college and then a team of both Israelis and Americans came to Istanbul to train pretty much all the available psychologists so that we could then in turn go and help the many, many people who were hurt by the earthquake in the field and in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So that earthquake sort of shaped my life in the sense that early on, I became quite a bit specialized in trauma intervention methods and got some hands-on field experience. Um, so yeah, and then about uh, not even a year, half a year later, we ended up moving, like I said, on initially to Cleveland. Uh, and then our journey here started. It took us a while to fully settle. My husband initially did a fellowship and then, he, you know, he did a second fellowship, <laughs> he qualified for his board examinations. He was one of the lucky ones that didn't have to repeat a residency. Many oh. immigrants, people don't always know how challenging uh, the legal immigration route may be but many immigrants have to repeat 
their education in order to be qualified here. Mm -hmm. And that was the case for me. I had to go back to school. And in some ways, that's how I ended up becoming an art therapist, because I didn't yeah. want to just repeat, but wanted to add some new elements uh, to my schooling. So um, I ended up going back for a counseling degree with a specialization in art therapy. So uh, maybe I am not uh, knowledgeable enough, but it is a professional specialty, art therapy. It is an option, right? Absolutely. It uh, usually comes after an undergraduate degree, typically either in the arts or in the field of psychology, counseling, social work. And then it's a master's degree. And nowadays there's also numerous doctoral degrees. It's becoming more and more medicalized in some ways. A very, yeah, big specialty that's becoming. Yeah, very interesting, you know, for me. It, I really delighted to hear this kind of specialty, basically. You know, I have my daughter, she's kind of artist. And she's also a doctor, <laughs> you know, the com combination. Yeah. Yeah. I have yet to meet her. I look forward to that. <laughs> yeah, you should. You should. Yeah. Okay. Um, how was your adaptation uh, with the children? You know, I, I know you are very busy uh, for the work uh, sometimes. How many patients, I don't know, you are seeing in a day. But especially during this time with the Zoom meeting, it is not easy with two kids at home, right? Now, actually, it's one of the easier phases of my life here because one of my kids is off in college already. He's studying linguistics at the University of oh. Michigan. The other is a junior at Skyline High. Okay, so I feel uh, I'm just now beginning to regain my freedom uh, mm -hmm. as a person who can really prioritize her own needs for many, many years. Once again, I think this is the experience of a lot of immigrants. We were here lonelier than uh, others might be because we end up not having access to family support or the relationships that only years and roots and a place can give you. So we had to do a lot of things on our own. And since my husband is a medical doctor, he was clearly not av available to, you know. Uh, Especially as a surgeon. So, yeah, many years it was a real challenge, which is probably also why it took me so long, mm -hmm. you know, to become qualified. Uh, because I was managing the kids and their needs, and the younger they are, the more all-consuming it is. As they get older, yeah. I feel it becomes much easier. Uh, how do you come up with this idea, you know, and then what do you want to achieve, or what do you want to share with the people with your project? Uh, we are already started. Uh, tell, tell people about your project a little bit and then they can uh, watch the other people's uh, interviews in that way, uh, knowing yeah. what you are trying to achieve. Thank you for that question. Uh, so one of the things that also changed for me over the years, early on in my career, I was really somebody that sought knowledge in a very hungry way. You know, I ended up getting three masters uh, over the years, partly because I had to, but also partly because I was always wanting to learn more. And even after I qualified as a psychotherapist, uh, I went to learn about Gestalt therapy, you know, continuing always to learn things, wanting to be able to help as many clients of mine in the best way possible. possible. I ended up even, you know, having other um, specialty educations in, for example, sensory motor psychotherapy. So I have a lot of knowledge that I've acquired over the, the years, but somewhere along the line, um, I realized that actually <laughs> there is no end to knowledge and knowing, and that 
Something else is being way more helpful to my clients. I was noticing that in sessions. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, what we all call wisdom. So I awesome. transitioned somewhere along the line without even thinking about it to becoming more of a wisdom seeker. And I find that very often we find wisdom in stories. Mm -hmm. And um, so what, when you asked me to talk about a topic, rather than giving a lecture on when it, any of the areas I could talk about really for hours, I thought it would be more interesting uh, for all of us to be able to access wisdom, which I think also exists in each one of us. So I never think of myself as particularly, you know, wiser than anybody else. I'm just somebody who constantly seeks it and recognizes it, you know, when I need it. Uh, but I also believe it resides, like I said, in all of us. And the way to access it is when we are listening to one another, when we it's become <laughs> curious to, uh, to the journey that the other has walked. The only way really to understand another person is through listening to what they've been through, what they are about, what they think, what they feel, you know, even the things that are most mind boggling, you would think there is no way I'm going to have empathy for this or understand this person. I found in therapy that the more I hear, the more information I have about their particular life journey, the better I understand. Mm -hmm. So this was one of the reasons, um, plus it's also what I personally enjoy better. <laughs> <laughs> This the old life of talk, right? <laughs> yeah, the older you get, the more you want to do just the things that give you your self-pleasure. When you're younger, you're more driven by things that you feel you have to do. And then as we get older, yeah, we just want to do the things that give us pleasure. And it gives me great pleasure to um, talk to people, get to know them. And I thought um, with the possibility of us having uh, women in a higher position in America, uh, possibly uh, soon, uh, what better time than getting to know some other women uh, that live in our community. So mm -hmm. it was a women's project in some ways. And I wanted to once again, make sure uh, I interview people not only based on their professions and their achievements. That's another thing I think that sometimes is a focus that is not the best of all uh, uh, to focus on, right? We always ask people, what do you do? And what are your accomplishments? But wisdom I find is often hidden in uh, the most ordinary of places. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to interview and access the wisdom that, you know, non-professional women ha have alongside women that have professions. So a good wide variety. And at the time that now that we're speaking, we already interviewed um, three people and I'm hoping at least to do three more. And the idea is really to visit with one another during the pandemic season where we don't have an, uh, as much of an opportunity to get to know other people, to gather in community. So to get to know one another in this way, using Zoom, we get to enter into your living room. Yeah, I hope you can continue more, uh, other than six. And I want people know one thing about you. You are also trying to write books or only one books about art therapy or what? Yeah, <laughs> I will get to that. Before I get to that, I just wanted to um, underline. So I already made three of these videos. And when you watch, really uh, pay attention and listen to close and uh, listen closely because every single woman has actually a wisdom message within their uh, dialogue conversation. One of the women, for example, already sort of highlighted the experience of an immigrant and uh, how 
immigrants, in fact, keep this country alive and vibrant. How it's, uh, she's reminding us how it's always been a country of immigrants. One of the other yes. women, uh, Sulbie, she really highlighted the importance of kindness and then also of having a positive outlook in life because typically we have a little bit more of a negative bias. So there's that little nugget of wisdom in her interview. Then I already talked with Asla, and in our interview, she really sort of underlined and highlighted the importance of perseverance on the one hand, flexibility, and open-mindedness. So uh, these stories, I think, are going to be filled with little nuggets of wisdom you know, for those that have the patience to listen to them. We also live in a time and an age where we're scrolling through social media and everything is fast and quick and we just read the highlights. Uh, I guess I've always been a bit of a contrarian. So what I'm offering you guys is the opposite. Uh, the, in an ideal world where you would make yourself a cup of tea, maybe even get a little bit of something sweet on the side, sit down and relax and give an entire hour to uh to get into know another person yes yes so i hope people enjoy at least i'm enjoying and then i knew people are enjoying it uh people, people enjoy see you also i guess <laughs> yeah tell me about your book yeah, thank you for asking about that. It's in process. I'm uh, hoping to be able to get it out by spring. It's called The Stories of My Art. And uh, in some ways, that's also um, a compilation of different stories that often combine elements of my work, what I'm observing, a book I'm reading, maybe a movie I might have watched. And also my art is a big part of it, the teachings that come out of my art, but combining them into little stories that hopefully have some nuggets of wisdom that everybody can resonate with and benefit from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we are this lucky. year we it'll be it. I hope it will get published soon. Yeah. Uh, 2021. <laughs> you already mentioned what people, what we want to achieve and what we want what people want to know and uh, would you want to add anything uh, to turkish community to say anything to us uh, for final words well uh, we all i guess this has been my chance to offer something to the com turkish community and i'm very grateful for it uh, so I guess what I'll say is thank you. And also a side note uh, uh, of um, reminding everybody not to be judgmental of when they're unable to make a contribution. Because until this moment, I'm really typically not that involved. Often I don't have time. You know, we have different tendencies and pensions. So this is the first time I'm getting to make a contribution. Oh, got you involved. Nice. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate it. I'm very yeah. grateful. Yeah. Thank you, Sibel, for doing this. And then I want to thank you for everyone interviewing with you, accepting your offer. And I hope you will enjoy this series and we will publish as soon as uh, we finish a couple of them. And I will. I hope you will enjoy it. Thank you, Sibad. Thank, thank you again. Thank you, Handa, and everybody else who will be watching us. Okay. Bye bye.